Okay, so we're going to characterize the sample using uh, the impedance analyzer. So how about we do this one? So first we'll we'll uh, go to calibration. Uh, we could say fixture compensation. Click that, and then you click uh, open circuit. You click open here, yeah. and then it says measuring. Okay, and you'll see this open is in, in bold, in, in cap lock, in capital. Mm -hmm. Whenever this is capital, it means it's on. It means that one's highlighted. So for example, short, off, load off, those are capital, so therefore those are not being active right now. Uh, you could also, if you wanted to be better, you could put a wire, take a wire, you put it between this one and this one, and then you would press short, but we don't have a wire right now, so we won't do that, and it's not that important. Uh, is it also, because this, is a circuit in itself because it has wires in it and there, as I told you before there's no perfect uh, fixture there's no perfect wire these wires have inductance you know these wires have some, there's some capacitance between uh, different parts that you, yeah. that you wouldn't see so this is why this thing actually adds to the circuit it's like a circuit and then you have your sample and you want to eliminate this part by measuring it beforehand I don't know if you understood that mm -hmm. uh, so you want to eliminate that from doing beforehand um, we know that this sample would probably have a around a 70 kilohertz, 60 kilohertz, and this would probably be a little bit bigger, so it'd be like 80. So if the sample's bigger, it would have a small, uh, larger, larger. If the sample's bigger, it would have a smaller, like resonant frequency. It's maybe about uh, 50 or 60 kilohertz. So because this one is already nicely uh, done here, we can just stick it in. This is where you stick it. You can just stick it in there. And you just let it hang. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So now we want to get to the right frequencies. So we press start. 60 kilohertz. We're stop. Stop. 70 kilohertz. See that bump wasn't there. It's not there anymore. Now we want to scale these. The, the this one is phase. What is this? I'm just I'm just gonna ask you right now. Is this resonance and be, what, what's this area over here? So let's take the cursor. Oh, that's not good. The cursor, this thing. Let Let's go cursor. Cursor. Where's the cursor button? Marker. So you see the phase in the top corner. This is the phase about zero here. This is about phase zero. What is this point? The, the resonance. Yeah, it's the resonance. And then the phase becomes 90, and then it goes back down to anti-resonance. So what is this point? Yeah, the phase, the anti-resonance. And you can sort of see the, so in the corner, it's telling you the impedance value, and it's telling you the phase value in blue. Um, yep. Can you also scale it for, you could so, yeah. see the, so now we need to scale it. So we go to A. I forgot, let me remember how to scale. Auto scale. Uh, is it auto scale button? Oh. Uh, I think there should be something. Okay, so you go to A. Display. More. Uh, no. Format. Linear. Okay. Uh, scale reference. Scale reference. And then you press auto scale. Now this is not the graph you normally are used to seeing that we normally present. You see this very peak. You know this peak point right there. The reason we're not seeing that peak on the bottom side it's is because we, we're not doing the yeah, logarithmic scale. So you have to do format uh, log. Now we look at phase in the linear scale because phase only changes sort of that way. And, uh, and we look at so this is a better image of what we want. So this is a, this has a nice response. So you can, not nice, but it's okay. So how I would go about doing it next? Uh, first, I would get, try to get closer to the resonance frequency and the anti-resonance frequency. So I know the anti-resonance frequency is about here. But look, uh, the phase isn't zero because uh, it's about zero anyways. So let's go here. So we want to go from, let's say, uh, the impedance at res anti-resonance is about 248. Now, I told you that to calculate the quality factor, we want the 3dB which is about 1.4 times higher than the resonance. So we, we should go for about 400, look for about 400 ohms 
and then see you know I'm just looking around it's just about 400 uh, something so it's about 65 kilohertz so let's do 65 to Sixty-five to sixty-six, I think. So we're gonna start at sixty-five kilohertz. We're gonna stop at sixty-six kilohertz. All right, we didn't get anything. Oops. Hold it. Stop. Where's the stop button? Stop at sixty-six kilohertz. Okay. Stop at sixty-seven kilohertz. And then I think we have to auto scale again. How do you do that again? It's one of these, isn't it? Scale reference, auto scale. Okay. I think we can also go to B and auto scale B. Uh, then we can go back to this marker. At this time, what you would see, you would make sure it, that, okay, here's 248, and here's 466 and here on this side is 564 so this is enough data for you to get what the bandwidth you have the bandwidth you have the resonance point what you would want to do now because when you whenever you take data from this machine it gives you 200 points if you take the whole thing you'll get all this you won't get enough resolution you know you'll go from like resonance to you know you understand you won't get enough resolution so even if you know normally if you don't have your exact 45 or you don't have your exact bandwidth you sort of interpolate between the two impedances to find the frequency uh, but you can't do that if you have like it'll be really bad if you have so you want to you want to have a finer resolution at this point because this this computer will only take 200 points on it this is the limitation of the machine that this is how they programmed it so if you you don't necessarily have to take the data off you can just look at it like this okay here's this number okay here's the bottom here's the 45 degree bandwidth here's the other 45 degree 45 degree or 3 dB bandwidth 3 dB is more standard to use uh, of the impedance and using that, uh, you would, so now at this time you would say, you, you would take the data. But there's actually one additional step. Uh, there's a lot of things built into this machine that help you measure more accurately. Uh, and for piezoelectric materials, which have a large transient response, uh, it's, it's, uh, many times it's important to take into consideration some of the things which this can do to make the measurement slower and more accurate. One of the things is that it av using this averaging, averaging. Right now, the averaging, or is the averaging? Uh, right now, averaging is off. We can turn averaging on. I think it's averaging this one. Mm -hmm. We can turn averaging on, and now we're going to look at the averaging factor. It's, it's at 16. So basically, it measures the thing 16 times. Each 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 like line thing, it measures 16 times. It takes the average of that each point, and then it plots it. This makes it go slower. It just makes the sweep go slower, which also in turn makes the transient response less. So if you have a transient response, you may be getting different errors uh, in the system. The other thing that we want to do is uh, there's something called INT. Help me look for something called INT here. Okay, display bandwidth, averaging, uh, scale reference. There's something called INT. Where to go? This can't be the only thing. 